Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Uh, looks like... Oh, oh hey! Hey, Zeus. How are you? Good, good, thanks. How are you, Jim? All right. So, everyone, welcome to another session in Jam's virtual Drupal camp. I have got Jesus Manuel Olivas talking with me today and presenting for you today all the way from, where are you based, Jesus? I'm in Mexicali, Mexico. Oh, so just, man. By the, just by the what? border of the US. Um, this Jam's Drupal camp thing is an offshoot of the Acquia podcast where I get to talk with a lot of smart people about Drupal, about open source, community, technology, business kind of things. And I get to see a bunch of Drupal camp sessions uh, during uh, the course of any given month. And I thought that it would be fun to highlight some to make them more easily findable and to sort of show them uh, quickly and easily to a broader audience of people. Hence, we have this event. Uh, Jesus and I spoke in New York City at the NYC camp not too long ago. And Jesus has a really, really interesting and really, really helpful programming tool for Drupal 8 developers. Um, we will get to that in a minute. Jesus, how, let's see, how long have you been doing Drupal? Been doing Drupal like five years now, but mostly like since two years, I've been doing more Symfony development than Drupal. Mm. So that's, that's why when this Drupal 8, I mean, initiative about like using Symfony components getting to, I mean, took place, I just got back interested to work in Drupal. Aha, uh -huh. you felt like coming home again. Yeah, yeah. So what's your first Drupal memory? Actually, I try. I, th I think I tried Drupal 5 something back in the time. But at that time, I, I used to be a Java developer. And I used to have my own CMS in Java, you know, JSP, ASF, JSDL, all that technologies. And I tried Drupal. It was not a good memory because, I mean, just, just load it. And there's like, I mean, boom, you have nothing. I mean, there's, I mean, I didn't even get the idea of Drupal. Like, you have to build, I mean, I mean add these modules to add this functionality. And I, I just kind of tried, but I didn't try hard. And I, for being sincere, I didn't, I didn't like how it looks. And I remember my, my CMS has all like Ajax and all this stuff and generating, it's more, was more than a CMS, was something like static site generator. Mm. And, and then just getting to Drupal and it feels like really, really complex and just, I mean, just didn't try hard and just quit. Then I, later on, I tried Drupal 6. And at the beginning, it was the first impression, like, it's the same thing. This the little thing does nothing. Then just get, get, in, get into the documentation, finding out, I mean, how Drupal works, and really, really got into the, how easy it was to extend. So that's what really get me from, from Drupal. Then starting from that, you start trying to build small sites and attending conferences and, and just really get into all this Drupal in community. And that's what I find Drupal is great. So when you first tried it out, it wasn't clear to you that you actually need to, that it's just a giant bucket of Legos that you need to put together to make, to make a house or a machine or a spaceship, right? Yeah, well, it was like, I mean, it, it actually it was my, was my fault because I didn't get into that documentation properly. I was trying to, I mean, I, I never, I didn't play with, I mean, with the others, but I know, I know, I have some friends that used to use like Joomla and Mambo the, in those days and, and WordPress. And, and remember from, from what they were telling me, like all those CMSs were like, I mean, out of the box and, and just use a product ready to work. That's what I find out hard in Drupal the first time. Or my, that's why my first attempt was, was not successful because I didn't, I didn't really get into the mindset of, that you can extend through adding modules and functionality and, and all. I mean, I mean, the Drupal basically didn't get into the Drupal way at that time. 
right? It's, it's sort of the opposite of a product. You can use it to make other products, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so, and, and um, I, think, I think that the first impression is, is unclear, I mean, most of the time. And, and it happens, people that get into Drupal tell me the same thing, and I, and I know their feeling, and it's like, oh, you know, you are, you are kind of trying... I mean, in a grown way, you should do it like this, and then you find you find out Drupal. It's it's just amazing tool. Okay, so once you figured that out, what what now? What's your favorite thing about Drupal now? I mean, like now, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't say like a module. It's what it's great for me. What it's what I really like about Drupal now it's the, the easy the easiest way you can add external libraries to your projects or how it's pushing all these best practices when building sites or modules basically implementing or trying to like implement this this problem bells invent elsewhere and I mean just forgot about the not invented here syndrome. It's kinda of adding new libraries of projects from other I mean or other other like um, products will be easier now with with I mean how based on how Drupal 8 is built. Oh sure. So what are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Oh well, basically there there's a couple of things like how easy is to like I mean, separate your or decouple your code. It's, it's like, I mean, how you easily can structure, I mean, your classes and this object oriented, how you can code, put your code into services and just consume that services with, I mean, within a controller or within a blog or any other piece of the, of the framework. It's easier to just, just put all these pieces, I mean, all, create all these little pieces and just consume or reuse them within the whole system. I do have to keep in mind that you are possibly uh, presenting the most technical and uh, geekiest session uh, of the week. So, of course, that is also your favorite stuff. How do you think that Drupal 8 is going to improve the workflow for developers like you? How's it going to make your job easier? Well, I mean, the, based on the way you build your, your modules or your, I mean, your tools, basically, this, I mean, you're talking about the same thing. You can instead of create put the, all of your code within your module, you can put this code within a li external library, and you can use this one, this this library within like Drupal or any other frameworks like like Silex or which, which is a micro framework, or Laravel or Symfony, and more people can get into I mean adding code or send you pull requests for the library. And maybe this library can can live outside of Drupal. Let's say let's let's we have this library living in GitHub, and more people, even people without any Drup without a Drupal user account, can I mean can send you commits to your project. And based on the workflow of the development, I mean it's easier to code. It's I mean what I have seen. I really learned in deep, but about the the, the CMI, which looks great. You can easily like 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 move your all your configurations. I was, oh, yes. from what, when I was talking to Larry last the other day, he was explaining about this stage API, which is all, also looks like really cool stuff. But there's a lot of cool stuff happening in Drupal 8. What word for you best describes Drupal? Well, that's, that's a <laughs> complex one. And I think it's extendable. But I think it's and even even always has been extendable, but like now Drupal is really really extendable. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I mean I think something huge about Drupal is their community, like like people, which is great. Okay, so 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 what's your favorite part about being in the in the Drupal community then? Yeah, you know it's like it's like really, it's I mean, it's been really cool. I've been. I mean, having the opportunity to meet people, I mean, all, all over the place, like having, I mean, sometimes just receive like an invitation to talk about Drupal and just, I mean, what is my passion and just being able to, to talk to people, let them know. It's kind of, as Brand was mentioning, I think it was yesterday, it's like a religious thing. It's like, you know, there's, there's, I mean, we always like having fun about this in, in, in our, I mean, in our camp, like, it's always like, it's like, you are trying, always trying to people like, you know, let know about Drupal and the best practices. But I think what I really like about a lot is like having a chance to talk to people, talk about Drupal and meet new developers. Uh, you know, I love being part of this community and surrounded by everyone who's smarter than me and, um, you know, but still willing to talk with me. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's and what is amazing is like even in, in in all those I mean all those I mean all those conferences you always I mean find find people like that you can learn about. I mean having a chance to I mean like 
talking to people like like Larry and yourself. I mean, it's like all, all the developers doing like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're getting into a specific issue and you were discussing the issue through, through the site, but then having a chance to talk them like person, that's, I mean, that's, that's priceless. Yeah, it's really, really, really great. So um, thank you really very much for coming on today. This is going to wrap up the podcast section of this. So thanks for coming on. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank now, you for the invitation. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, uh, podcast listeners, come over to the Acquia.com page, and you will uh, find Jesus's session and slides embedded there, as well as a post about it. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care.